So last week we discussed how procrastination is a multifaceted issue. Yep. It's not just a surface level thing. It's not just some character flaw. Mm -hmm. There's deeper reasons behind it. If you did not get to hear that part of the conversation, go back and listen to it because it sets up a lot of the tactics we're going to talk about in this episode. Yeah. So there's a lot more going into procrastination besides how hard you're trying. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it's a little bit more than that. And that's good because there's a lot of tactics that we can use to improve and uh, kind of stop this bad habit. We're going to get into the practicals of how to do that strategies, real life strategies today on the show. This is the Thriving Man Podcast with David and Reese Maxwell. These weekly shows are designed to help you remove the confusion from your life and make real progress with your growth. No matter where you are or where you're going, we're here to help you live a life you can be proud of. So welcome to the Thriving Man Podcast. Welcome to the Thriving Man Podcast, where our goal is to help you get out of survival mode and into living a life that you can be proud of. I'm Reese. And I'm David. And we are all here to help you overcome procrastination yes. this week month. Let's beat it. The month of procrastination. Well, I don't know if that's the best title. The month of procrastination is not my destination. <laughs> yeah, it <laughs> rhymes. Procrastination is not my destination. That's the new book series coming out on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the title <laughs> is the entire book. It that's is. about as long of a title as you can title. get. So now that we have a better understanding of what procrastination is, yes. we spent the last two episodes discussing its negative effects mm -hmm. and its roots. Let's get into the tips. Let's yeah. get into the strategies to boost productivity mm -hmm. and to conquer that procrastination. Yeah. Why don't you give us the first strategy? The first thing you want to do is work to create a productive work environment. In other words, you want to create an environment where procrastination is not the natural thing for you. Mm. And, and it takes, you know, a lot of things like learning about yourself and everything. But what you want to do is really think about uh, what's going on right now in my life, what all's happening, and, and what am I surrounded by? What am I doing? You know, if you're in an office, let's say you're trying to get work done for work, you're in an office but your desk is cluttered, you can't find anything, all this stuff is going on, um, it's going to be hard to really reflect. It's going to be hard to think about how am I being productive when you spend 13, 14 minutes looking for one piece of paper on your desk. And I think sometimes we do that with our life. We're not creating environments to reflect, to really think about what we're doing, and to make things more efficient, mm -hmm. to find the best way to do something. And a lot of times if we take a little bit of uh, work up front to set up maybe a, a template of how we do something or a place that we work at, those kind of things can help us be more productive mm -hmm. in the long run. So we really need to look at our environment. What are we doing with things around us and what's going on in our life at the moment? Yeah. Yeah. Your environment sh shapes your behavior. Mm -hmm. That's just true. I think we all know that to a certain extent, like... If you want to go do some deep reflecting, yeah. you're not going to go to a college football game. That's true. That's because true. that environment doesn't give a rip about reflection. Yeah. It wants yeah. to focus on the game. It's loud. It's noisy. That would be dumb. Nobody's going to go do that. Mm -hmm. Nobody's going to go take their brainstorming session to the student section yeah. at LSU. Yeah. That's just not going to work. Yeah. Um, so we understand it in those extremes. And yet a lot of times we're very haphazard. Mm -hmm. in the environment we're working. We're like, oh, well, I'll just, uh, I'll go do on my couch this yeah. proposal. You mm -hmm. know, I'm going to go do this mm -hmm. business proposal on my couch, which happens to be the same place where I watch TV every time and yeah. the remote's right there and the TV's right there. You yeah. know, like you're kind of setting yourself up to mm -hmm. be like, well, mm -hmm. I could just watch a little something. You know, yeah. it's a lot of times we neglect to realize that where you're at, can either be a tactical advantage for you to mm -hmm. conquer your procrastination yeah. or it can be a tactical disadvantage for you. Yeah. Well, and like you said, if you're, if you're at a place where it's very easy to do the wrong thing mm -hmm. or it's very easy to let distraction in, mm -hmm. 
then it's going to be it's going to be hard to get things done. Yep. And so why are you trying to fight against what could be an environment that you can change? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key is that you can change. Yeah. You can do that. That's a huge and I would thing. say, you know, start with what, what I said earlier. One of the things where we have the most procrastination is in our workspace where we're trying to do something. And I would say start by removing that the potential distractions from where you work. You know, if, if you're working, but your phone is right here and every notification going off draws your eyes away from your work. computer yeah. or whatever, you're going to need to do something with your phone. Yep. Um, I teach youth on Wednesday night and I have them, we have a charging station in the back with a bunch of chargers and we call it the phone bed. And I make them put their phone to bed is what we call it. They get to charge it for free, mm -hmm. which everybody loves to charge their phones. And they can't use it during the service because I know that phone's a distraction to mm -hmm. them because it would be a distraction to me. I don't use my phone when I'm sitting in church. I don't use it for my Bible. I don't take notes on it because it's a distraction. And it's going to be like, oh, wait, oh, let me check this out. And the next thing you know, 10 minutes later, you've missed half the service because you've been on your phone. Mm -hmm. So what you want to do is maybe maybe you need it by you, but you turn off notifications or put it on do not disturb, or you don't have a million tabs open on your computer. Have you ever seen those desktops people have where they have so many things saved to their desktop yes. that you can't even see the desktop? I know somebody like that in our church offices. Really? Yep. 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 It's probably 200 things God, on the desktop. That would stress me out just seeing it. Me too. <laughs> me too. But you, you bring up a good point. And for those of you who are taking notes, I guess the way that we would say it is start by removing mm -hmm. potential distractions from your workspace. Yeah. So like I love the illustration you used with the phones. Mm -hmm. That can be a potential distraction. Um, a cluttered desk, you brought that yep. up as well. That yep. can be a potential distraction. Anything that's going to throw you off of the rhythm to getting down to work, mm -hmm. that's a potential distraction. And so we want to remove those because that's what's going to turn our space into a tactical disadvantage. Yeah. Like if you work from home and your child lives at home, mm -hmm. that's going to be tough. Yeah. You're going to need an office room. And yeah. it's going to have to be an office room that that kid does not have. Like you're not allowed to do it unless it's an emergency kind yeah. of a thing. Like you have to be very intentional with your environment or else it's just going to get overcome by a bunch of random stuff. Mm -hmm. Kind of it's, it's along the same vein, but something separate. When you are doing an especially deep or difficult project, have a separate place you go to. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so like yeah. if you're a if you're a marketing director at work. And sometimes you got to sit down and really think big picture about mm -hmm. a campaign. Um, it's probably not going to be the best place to do it where your emails are popping up all the time. Yeah. You might need to take yeah. a notepad and go to a cafe that nobody else knows about. Yeah. Or go to a, your favorite bench at your favorite park mm -hmm. or something like mm -hmm. that. You got to find a place to be a spot where you can get away from all the distractions. And yeah. even... If it's outdoors, if it's in a place of beauty, that can end up fueling your creativity, mm -hmm. fueling your motivation. So that's one area that I think we could really use to make our workspace better. Yeah, and when you when you focus on the distractions, you're focusing on saying, not right now. Mm -hmm. You don't have to get rid of stuff. Mm -hmm. You just say, this isn't the time. I'm focusing on this. One thing I've noticed that when you... When you watch chefs, a lot of times when they cook, everything is prepped before they start cooking. Mm -hmm. And the reason they do that is because sometimes if you're trying to cook, you're reading a recipe, you're just kind of following as it goes, but nothing is prepped. You'll get distracted. Mm -hmm. You'll mess up. You'll mm -hmm. miss things, and it messes the meal up. So that's why chefs always have, okay, here's all the spices I need in this bowl, or this is all the stuff already cut up and done. Because that way there's no distractions when they're cooking. Mm -hmm. And I think we could learn that too. If I'm about to do a project, what do I need? Yeah. Do I have blank paper to write on? 
Do I have my computer set up where nothing else is there? They even have programs now that if you're writing, it can basically take everything off your computer except that one screen. Mm -hmm. So you can just focus on writing. Do those things. Mm -hmm. Because what you're doing is you're being intentional about your focus. Mm -hmm. You're saying, now is the time to focus, and now is the time for me to kind of get the distractions away. And you'll find yourself a whole lot more productive. Yeah, because being in a familiar environment can end up being a distraction in and of itself. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. we all experienced this whenever COVID happened in 2020 yeah. and everybody had to stay at home. Mm -hmm. I think we realized it's really difficult for me to focus on work where I can see dishes right there yeah. that need to be done. Yeah. And I can see, you know, when I walk outside, you know, to get the mail, that pile of mulch yeah. that I'm supposed yeah. to be actually putting in the garden or, mm -hmm. you know, fill in the blank. It's It can be difficult to be in an environment where you're constantly being reminded of the mm -hmm. 10 other things you need to do. Yeah. And so that's where getting out of the office can be an effective way to minimize distractions yeah. or maybe yeah. even having a certain area that's just kind of more inaccessible to be able to be removed from those distractions. That's going to be the first and arguably one of the most important things you can do to be. turn your environment into a productive workspace. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. And I even think, look at your workspace and say, okay, is it comfortable? Does it sure. appeal to me visually? Is it is it a calming room? Things like that. Like mm -hmm. if you have a home office, what are you doing to make sure it stays to where it doesn't become more distracted to you? Mm -hmm. Other things aren't brought in. You know, what helps you with that? Like for me, one of the biggest things I do is I listen to music almost mm -hmm. all the time when I work. And I have certain soundtracks I do for, gosh, almost everything I do. But but it to me, it just helps me. Okay, I'm listening to this. It's time to it's create. Time to it's time to write. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you want to you wanna do that because what it does is, again, you're teaching your brain, now it's the time to focus. And so then your brain gets trained to, okay, it's focus time. Mm -hmm. And I think you'll find that the distractions and your procrastination will lessen as you do that more. Yeah. And there's something about being in a beautiful environment that just helps you mm -hmm. feel more motivated. I mean, walk into a room with all blank white walls and yeah. then walk into a room with yeah. beautiful art or yeah. amazing natural light and landscapes. One's going to make you feel more productive. It's true. And so why don't we take that and use that to benefit us? Because mm -hmm. like you said earlier, a couple bits of work, a couple bits of adjusting up front mm -hmm. can yield results for as long as you're in that workspace. Yeah. And so it's a totally worthwhile investment. And that's the first thing that we would say to avoid procrastination, make sure your environment is a tactical advantage for you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about number two. Yeah. The second thing is to learn how to set realistic goals and deadlines. And uh, I think of one of my favorite movies of all times, The Incredibles, where at the beginning of the first one, Mr. Incredible is doing all these things to save the, the 75 world. 75 people. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, but it's the day of his wedding. And he's like, oh, I got time. Yeah, I got time. And he says that to, he was late. Late to his own wedding because he thought he had time. And it makes me laugh, but how many of us have done that? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, I can, do, I can do that in 15 minutes. And Two it, hours later. <laughs> So, so what you want to do is set some realistic goals and deadlines. Um, one thing to remember, when you have clear goals, this is what I'm trying to do. That gives you direction. It does. Where you're not just saying, I want to lose weight. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, that doesn't, what does that mean? You say, I want to lose 10 pounds in the next two months mm -hmm. or three months. That's a clear goal. That's something you can grab a hold of and actually work toward rather than just, oh, I just want to lose weight. Yeah. Whenever you have a vague goal, it's easy to get overwhelmed mm -hmm. because there's no sense of focus to it. And that's why everybody talks about having smart goals or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like a lot yeah. of those acronyms yeah. are just tools to be able to get clear with your goals. Because for example, let's say you want to pick up the hobby of learning guitar. Mm -hmm. What on earth does that mean? Like, do you want to be a virtuoso at guitar? Because if mm -hmm. so, that's a path of like a decade. Yeah. So just be ready for that. You know, what is your definition of learning guitar? Do you want to 
be able to play a particular set of songs. Like, oh, I always loved Johnny Cash. I always wanted to be able to play his songs. Yeah. Well, that's a more specific goal. You know, you're not trying to learn all of guitar. You're trying to learn these songs. Or do you want to learn a particular set of scales? Mm-hmm. Or do you want to be able to, to improv mm-hmm. on a certain backing track? You know, to be able to get specific is important. Because if you just say, learn guitar, mm-hmm. your brain knows that you don't know what that means. Yeah. And so it's going to be like, learn gu- guitar. I, I don't really care. Yeah. And so you're going to procrastinate. Because who, like, okay, I learned how to pluck a string. I guess yeah. I've learned guitar. I've learned you know? guitar. It's very easy to shift that definition. Or it can become such a big, vague goal that it's overwhelming. Yeah. Not only it does it not focus you, it can end up being a barrier to mm-hmm. you accomplishing it. So you have to get clear. You have to get specific in order to get direction. Yeah, and that comes to the next thing, that when you have a realistic goal, when you've kind of nailed it out and you know what you want, that gives you motivation. You know, when when you go from vague to specific, that can help you get motivated. You can say, okay, you know, today is, is June 1st of 2024, you know, and I want to, you know, do something great by the end of the summer, by August 31st. But what a lot of times what we do is we say, okay, it's June 1st, 2024. I want to have a seven figure biggest business by June 30th. Oh, that's a good point. It needs to be realistic. Yeah, it needs to be realistic. We need to come down and make it something that is realistic, where it still pushes us but it's realistic. It's not impossible. Because what we do is we say, I'm going to lose 100 pounds. And we think that's specific. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but there's no, there's no date to it. There's no time. If you say you want to lose 100 pounds in a month, you're not going to do it. No. After about one day, you're going to be like, this is impossible. Mm-hmm. And, and pretty much is. It wouldn't be healthy to lose 100 pounds in a month. No. So, so what you want to do is say, okay, what, what's good? What's a goal? And maybe what's a dream? Goals get you to the dream, but if all you do is dream, you'll never reach your goals. Yeah. So what you want to do is go, okay, I want to lose 100 pounds. That's my dream. Mm. My goal is my first 10 pounds or my first five pounds. Mm -hmm. That gets you toward the dream, but that's a more realistic goal that can help you really get your motivation going as you get it moving in the right direction. I love what you said there, that goals gets you to your dream. Mm -hmm. But if you just dream, you'll never set any goals and make progress. And that's a, that's a great way to put it because we don't want to mistake our goals for our dream. Yeah. A lot of times we as guys, not to call us out, but we will set unrealistic goals because just having a small goal does not motivate us. Yeah. And that's true. I mean, every man wants to change the world. He doesn't just want to like move his pinky toe, you know? So But the thing is that you need to have both. You need Mm -hmm. to have the dream of what you want to accomplish one day. But the goal has got to be that first step. It's a stepping stone towards that dream. If if your dream is to get to the third story of a building, why don't we start walking up the first flight of stairs? Yeah. You know, that's the difference. The goal's more practical. The goal's more realistic. The dream can be ambitious, Mm -hmm. big, inspiring. The goal doesn't have to be super inspiring in and of itself. Yeah. It just helps connect you yeah. to the bigger dream. That's why goals not only have to be specific, they have to be realistic because mm-hmm. it's like the stairs getting to the next level. Yeah. yeah. And I understand that great goals are something that are scalable. Mm-hmm. When, you, when you break it down into little steps, okay, I want to lose 100 pounds. Mm-hmm. I start with losing my first five pounds. Okay, now what do I do? What do I need to do to lose five pounds? Well, that, that's one, easier to think of, but it's also scalable because you just start repeating that and it becomes easier, it becomes natural. And so if every month you're losing five pounds, well, in two years, easy, you've lost 100 pounds. Mm-hmm. And so what you want to do is work that to your advantage to where you're not, okay, I have to lose 100 pounds. So you've got all these things in mind of what you have to do. It's like, okay, I lose five pounds. It's toward the goal, but five pounds is scalable and you can get a process going where you can keep losing those five pounds. You don't just do it one time. You can keep it going to where that 100 pounds comes into realistic view. Yeah, losing weight happens one pound at a time. It does. You know, any project you do happens one action at a time. 
So the scalable planning is to be able to connect those actions with that big dream. Mm -hmm. um, Cal Newport has a great system he calls multi-scale planning. And it's where you have a seasonal plan, mm -hmm. which can be based either on a semester or a quarter, whatever you prefer. What do I want to do in the next few months? That's kind of the big goal. Yeah. And then you have your weekly goal, which links to the big goal. Mm. So it takes that big three-month goal, which can be intimidating to yeah. look at, and says, what do I have to do this week to get there? Yeah. And then from there, that's when you make your daily schedule. Yeah. So for example, if we want to use, well, I'll give you an example from my life. One of my goals for this semester is I wanted to get our community groups, which is our small group church system, mm -hmm. to be during our assimilation process to where new people naturally join a group yeah. instead of trying to wrangle everybody in. So that was the goal. Um, Eventually, as time went along, I, we decided that after our membership class, it should be one of the options uh, as a next step once mm -hmm. you finish the membership class. Um, so that brings it in to the assimilation process. And so for the last probably month, I've been working on printed and digital documents to give to people that list community groups and a couple other things as possible next steps. Mm. Here's the thing that's so important and why I told the story. I don't care about a brochure. I'm not a visual person. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter to me. I could not, you couldn't ask me to, to conjure up the motivation to do that. However, because it was one step mm -hmm. in the process of something big that I cared about, guess what I had to tackle it? Motivation. Yeah. So instead of procrastinating like I normally would, mm -hmm. I got to make a brochure. I don't even care. That doesn't have anything to do with what I'm trying to accomplish. Yeah. I got to see the big picture yeah. and it went all the way down to mm. the little thing that I wouldn't normally care about. Yeah. That's the beauty of multi-scaled planning. Yeah. It can take the unglamorous thing you have to do up front to get to the bigger picture. Yeah. So if your goal is to lose 100 pounds, yeah. and this semester that means you're trying to lose 20, mm -hmm. and this week that means you have to lose three or two or whatever it is, that's what gives you the motivation to count your calories today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what gives you the motivation to go to the gym when you don't feel like it. It Being able to look at it from different angles yeah. helps when the procrastination is tempting. Yeah, that's really good because you want to you want to take your big thing, bring it down into measurable steps. But then also as you do that, you want to remember that when you're setting those deadlines, those guides, those first steps, you want to be honest about what they are, how much time they take. That's true. You know, if you say I'm going to lose 10 pounds a week, okay, that's not very scalable. Um, 10 pounds maybe in two months is much more scalable. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so what you want to do is be realistic about your time. One of the things I am guilty of is, oh, I can do that. I'll do that in half a day. And it's like, no, mm -hmm. it's going to take a whole day, maybe a day and a half. And so then I feel like a failure because I thought, well, I should have done it in half a day. But that's only in my mind. I thought half a day is what it takes to do this which is unrealistic. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. as men, we tend to do that. Oh, I can paint the whole house in one weekend. No, you can't even prep in one weekend. So, so we want to be careful that we're not overshooting the mark and expecting like superhuman abilities that we just can't come up with because then we'll back off, we'll feel like a failure, and then we'll keep procrastinating for the future. Mm -hmm. And that's where using a planner or a digital calendar mm -hmm. to help you prioritize what you're trying to do that day and then even block off yeah. how much time it's actually going to take, that can give you a very real objective sense of like, ooh, this project's going to take me two hours. Mm -hmm. I still want to hang out with my wife after, so I can't add this to the schedule today. Yeah. And yeah. so that helps you to not only have your goals and taking realistic steps, but to not add too much at once and get yeah. overwhelmed, which yeah. is going to make you want to yeah. procrastinate. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll do that. And, and so the third thing we want to talk about today is, is not only if you, you want to reach your goals, you want to do that, but you want to fight procrastination. What you've got to do is learn how to prioritize tasks and manage your time efficiently. There's no easy way to do that. Your tasks are yours. 
If you don't prioritize, then everything becomes important. Mm -hmm. If everything is important, nothing's important. That's good. You'll just go with whatever's in front of you, whatever squeaky wheel needs the grease, but that doesn't mean you're going to get the right things done. So what we want to do is bring some management to our task so we know, okay, today I've got 10 tasks I want to do. Well, that may not be realistic for the day. Okay, mm -hmm. what are the big three? Michael Hyatt talks about that in the Full Focus Planner. What are your big three for the day? These are the things I have to get done. you got to have some system to figure out what's the most important task that I need to work on. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. So we talked about tasks. We talk about time. Mm -hmm. um, the good thing is the systems we're going to give you are not super complicated. Yeah. Um, and they're tools. Once again, even with the multi-scaled planning, use what helps you. Yeah. You know, we're not telling you to copy paste things perfectly. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind as we go into this. First, for task management, there's a very simple way to do it. That's, I think, really cool called the Eisenhower Matrix. Mm -hmm. And basically, you take a sheet of paper and you make a little cross to put it into four quadrants. Okay. And the four quadrants from left to right Okay. are going to be on the top left, you have what's important and urgent. Mm -hmm. Like this needs to get done and this needs to get done soon. Yeah. On the top right is important, but not urgent. Okay. So this matters, but it's not pressing. Three bottom left mm -hmm. is urgent, but not important. Okay. So this is acting like it's a huge deal. It doesn't really matter that mm -hmm. much. And then on the right, it's not urgent and it's not important. Mm -hmm. Once you have put everything in one of those four buckets, yeah. for the not urgent, not important, you can probably just cut most of that. Yeah. For the urgent but not important, you should minimize that. For the urgent and important, you need to take care of that. But your goal is to have as much stuff in the important but not urgent quadrant as possible mm -hmm. because that will get you in a place where you're productive and everything you do matters but you don't have the stress of everything being right on top yeah, of you. It's not due tomorrow. And if you need to see a visual example of that, look up the Eisenhower matrix and you'll see all kinds of templates and guides for it. It's a really cool tool yeah. that you can use. May I wouldn't do it necessarily all the time, but mm -hmm. like maybe once a week when you're looking at the tasks for the week, you can classify it. It's a good filter yeah. for your tasks. Yeah, and I think that's a good idea to look at. There's another one that helps you. It's a very simple time management thing, especially when you're not motivated. I've used it before. It's the, the Pomodoro method or technique. And it's a very simple way to manage your time when you're like, okay, I'm not super motivated, but I got to get this done. Mm -hmm. And the Pomodoro technique is you take a timer, set it for 25 minutes, and you're going to work all while the timer is going. You can even use an old scale ding timer if you want. It doesn't matter. In fact, they make them. But 25 minutes of work, and then we'll take a five-minute break. Five minutes to do whatever. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to do it again. You do that four times, and then at the, after the four, you take a 25-minute break. So what you're doing is you're kind of pushing yourself to, okay, let me get to the prize. Mm -hmm. For that five minutes, if, if you want to... Scroll TikTok videos, you can. If you want to go get something to eat, go for a walk, whatever you want to do, you get to that five minutes. So it's almost like a little mini reward for being productive in those 25 minutes. And it really helps you, especially if you're feeling kind of overwhelmed but not super motivated, to kind of push that motivation and to let you kind of get some stuff done the way you need to. Yeah, it's smart because instead of breaking down the tasks, you're breaking down your time. Mm-hmm. And I think that's a good way to handle it, especially if you have a big project. Yeah, you really can break down your time so that it's not so intimidating and mm -hmm. you won't be tempted to procrastinate. Yep. So our challenge to you today is to implement one of these three tactics. Mm -hmm. Only one. Don't try and implement all three at the same time. I know you want to because you want to have your life together by next week. Yeah. But we're focusing on one at a time. The three are one clear and realistic goal setting, that mm -hmm. multi-scaled planning that we talked about. Yeah. That's option one. Option two is the Eisenhower matrix, which is really just being able to delineate in what is important and urgent when it comes to tasks. Yeah. And then three is the Pomodoro technique, which is whenever you have something big in front of you, breaking down your workday 
into that little 25 and yeah, 5 25 and mixture. 5. So these techniques are descriptions of what has worked for people, not prescriptions on you have to copy paste it in your life or mm -hmm. else you're terrible. So prototype it, have fun experimenting, try it. And we would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, please comment on our Instagram or our Facebook. We'd love to share some stories yeah. of what you tried and what worked and didn't work for you. We'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the Thriving Man Podcast. If you want to check out more resources from David and Reese, you can go to thrivingman.com. We'll see you in the next episode.